Hello, Sister Joan. When did you first become a sister? When did I first become a sister? Well, that goes back a long, long way. Because you know how long I've been a sister? No. 60 years. Wow. I've been a sister for 60 years, so that's a long way. Sister Joan, did you find it hard to become a sister? I did. I did. I have to admit I did find it hard to become a sister. I was only 20. My life was ahead of me. People said to me at home, why are you doing something like that? You won't be happy. But I was happy because when I came, I felt I was answering the call that God gave me and I was happy to do what God called me to do. Look, here you have, when we wore the old coronet, you see it here, look? See this up here? I wore that for 10 years. Right. It was a peasant dress of the Ile de France because we weren't nuns. If you were a nun in the time of St. Vincent, that's nearly 400 years ago, you had to be cloistered. You had to be in a convent and you couldn't come out. Once you went in, you couldn't come out. St. Vincent didn't want anything like that. He wanted his sisters to go out into the streets of the city and the wards of the hospitals. He even said, your cloister is the city streets. One of St. Vincent's things was that he would always try and meet people where they were, not where we were. So going out to them and into their home was a real privilege, you know, to go in and to share with them um, and not ask them to come to where you are so that they have to make all the effort. It was like when I had to make the effort, I think I felt more like St Vincent and the First Sisters who went out onto the streets to try and find the poor and help the poor. What inspired you the most of becoming a sister? I think for me the thing that inspired me most was other sisters because I was doing voluntary work when I was at school in a school in Glasgow for children who were deaf and it was a residential school and there was many sisters there many young sisters and I think I thought well I do the same work that they do because I was t looking after the children I used to pray yeah. uh, I went to mass um, and I thought well the only thing that I don't have that I felt that I was missing was that they had each other the support of each other and I think that inspired me to think a little bit more about where God might be calling me in my life. And I also believe in life that if one person does something good, that's good. But if a group of people do something, it's got much more impact than just one person doing it. The Daughters of Charity are 92 countries of the world, so we're international. And we've gone out from different places to different parts of the world. We're really privileged because we belong to a community that kind of capsulates the whole world. And wherever we go, we would feel as at home and welcomed because we belong to the international family. Has anybody ever heard the phrase, kindness is the key to hearts? Mm -hmm. yeah. Who said that phrase? Well, St. Vincent. No, kindness is the, the key to hearts. It's the way in. So if you're kind to somebody, that will change how they feel about themselves. And it will change how you feel about yourself. So I think that when the sisters went to some of these countries, they did to enable the people to be able to do something for themselves and not just have handouts. So something, sometimes it was about the change of people's minds of how they could maybe help themselves better with support. So some of these countries that we've gone to now, like in Kenya, there's Kenyan sisters. In Ethiopia, there's Ethiopian sisters. Their own people are now the ones who are leading the community there. It's such a blessing to be a daughter charity and to be part of uh, an international community. There's 17,000 daughters of charity in the world. And it's really good to be part of something that's so big and it makes me think the tiny little bit that I can do is made so much better because I can join it with everybody else's.
And it's not just all about being daughters of charity. There's the Incension priests. Um, there's all kinds of groups of people who follow St. Vincent. And just being part of that big family, um, that's really significant. It makes me feel really good. Every daughter of charity, wherever the daughters of charity live, we always have a chapel. We always have a place where we can gather together and pray. And that's what St Vincent was all about, as you know. St Vincent's whole idea was that what we receive from God, we should give to other people, particularly people who are less well off than ourselves. And so it's really important that, we, that everything we do and everything you do as young Vincentians is based on prayer and based on that special love that God has for each one of you. Are you inspired by St Vincent? Oh yes, absolutely, and St Louise. They really were very special people. For their time, they did extraordinary things and it, it shows us that we can do extraordinary things now. What touched you the most about St Vincent? I think for me was just the fact that he was inspired by God to do something for to to make the world a better place. Lovely. Very so nice. what inspires you about Saint Vincent? I think he's a great person and he he's always there to help to everyone. Um well when Saint Vincent was dying he um he still thought that after all he had done he still thought that he should have done more to help other people. Even though people were being like really rude to them or like um, just push him away, he will always be kind to them. Mm -hmm. That he would do something even even though that it would hurt his family to leave and it would hurt the De Gandhi family. But he did it in spite of love for God. Mm -hmm. That's right. When he took on Marguerite Nassau, she was just a poor farm girl and she didn't really have any like qualifications or previous work, but he just took her on and made her one of the sisters. He teaches me that if you're really determined, you can do anything. I think the same as Priscilla, that if you try, you can really do anything. But remember, the important thing is that whatever we do, that we offer it to God. We do it for God. And God will never be outdone in generosity.